All right, hey gang, back again for another video to uh, make sure that you are good with the chapter test in preparation for our first chapter test. So excited. <laughs> hey, no, you guys are doing great. I can't wait to have you guys take this test. So uh, in taking a look at what we have, I'm gonna get right to it because I, I don't wanna waste your time. And so in taking a look at number one, it says here, whoa, we just went out of focus. Uh, it looks better. Okay. It says the sum of the square of a number and 34. So the square of a number would look something like this. And if you wanted to have the sum, the sum of the square of a number and 34, or you could have 34 plus x squared, it really wouldn't matter because either way you add 2 plus 3, it's the same as 3 plus 2. Okay. The product of 5 and twice a number. So the product of 5 product means to multiply and to take twice a number you're going to do the product of five and twice a number i would do something like that okay the product of five and twice a number um we were multiplying times twice a number all right evaluate now again on my paper on my test i'd probably be putting down something like this okay and then, you know, writing it out, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, divide, left to right, as add and subtract, left to right, okay? So I'm starting from my innermost part and working my way out. So 15 minus 7 is 8. 4 divided by 2 is 2. From there, I have 8 times 2, which is 16. Oh, well, again, I was working from my innermost. I probably should have went ahead and did my exponent first. So 2 to the third, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And so if I take 8 times 16, 80, 6 times 8 is 48, so 108. Check me in the calculator, but I believe 108 there, okay? Number 5, I'm going to plug the values in. So I have 3w plus 8 minus v. Oh, don't forget the t here. And then we have a t. Okay. And actually, I did a boo-boo here. I should always put parentheses around anything I put into an expression. Okay. So this is going to be 12 plus 8 minus 5 is 3. And then times 2. Okay. From there, I'm going to do multiplication here. Okay. So I, I basically did parentheses here. I did multiplication here. Okay. And then I'm going to do this one. So we have 12 plus 6, which is 18. Okay, so my answer is 18 right there. Okay. Uh, number 8, I have 4. Now i got to work inside the parentheses here. I'm going to multiply and divide left to right. So 5 times 1 is 5 divided by 20. 5 divided by 20 is 1 fourth or... 0.25, yeah, I had to think for a second. And what's one fourth of four? That's easy, that's just one. Okay, so you should have gotten one there. I'm gonna use the distributive property, which means the multiply through, and then I'm gonna solve it. Three times 14, 30 plus 12, 42, minus three times five, which is 15. And let's see here, 42 minus 15, 42 minus 20 would be 22 plus 5, 27 is my answer right there. Number 10, to simplify each expression, I'm going to bring my like terms together. These are the only like terms. So I'm going to do 15 minus 6, which is 9. And that right there is the simplified form. Over here, I'm going to distribute that through the parentheses. And then from there, I'm going to combine. <laughs> Excuse me. Whew. I'm going to combine like terms. So we have 17y plus 7. Okay. And I can't combine these two because they're not like terms. So this is my final answer there. Uh, number 12. If I can get this up here. Number 12. Uh, I'm just going to add straight from left to right. So. Uh, I'll do this, 30 plus four, uh, 10 is 40, I have 10, 20, 
should be 60. 40 and 20 make 60, yep. So that's my final answer there, okay? And uh, I can take a third of nine, which is gonna be three, and half of four, which is two, and I can multiply those together and I get six, okay? All right, um, for questions 16 and 17, use the graph as shown, uh, shows temperatures as a function of time. Okay, so at 6 a.m. all the way through 10 a.m. Identify independent and dependent variables, okay? So again, independent, what that means is what, ha what, what can we not influence? We have no bearing on, and the answer is time. We cannot influence time, so I'm gonna say that time is independent and that uh, temperature for the day depends on what time of day you're taking that measurement. So I'm gonna say that is dependent, okay? All right, the next one, okay? Uh, number 17, name, an, uh, name the ordered pair at point C and explain what it represents. At point C, on the previous side, is this ordered pair. Uh, we have 8, 87, okay? So this is 8, 87. This is the x value. This is the y value. Uh, at 8 a.m., the temperature was... 87 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So if we look there, it was Fahrenheit, yep, yep. So if I look at the previous side, we have that this was Fahrenheit and this one was just time. So at 8 a.m., it was 87 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? For questions 18 to 20, use the table that shows the airmail letter rates at to Greenland, okay? Write the data as a set of ordered pairs. So if I'm gonna do this as a set, Remember, we use those brackets there, of ordered pairs, weight, and then rate. If you wanna put 4.20, you can, it's not a big deal. Weight, you can put 6.02, it doesn't matter. And then rate. Weight, and then rate. And the last one, uh, weight, and then rate. Okay, so the set of ordered pairs right there. Number 19, draw and graph. Uh, draw a graph that shows the relationship between the weight of a letter sent airmail and the cost. Okay, so at five ounces, we're looking at 4.2, so about a fifth the way up. Okay, um, at six ounces, just above five, a smidge. At seven, we're looking at 5.9 below and that 8 is 6.75 6.75 okay um you know i don't know if it's accurate enough it looks kind of like it's a linear linear graph okay it's pretty close so um the last one bonus uh let's see here use grouping symbols and symbols addition to find the form of the yield okay uh, I'm going to leave this as a bonus. I'm going to let you guys try and figure that out, and we'll go from there. So, um, anyways, thanks for paying attention. Hope this helped prepare for your Chapter 1 test. Good night.